Then I started to experiment with different size lenses on either side of a double-sided lens. These combinations became version 4 and 5. I began to run into repeating interference patterns which seemed to make the lens useless in almost all applications. I could often curve the material to remove most of the repetition. I didn't fully understand why this was occurring until I put a certain combination of lenses together, which in turn created just over a hundred of these repeats across 28 inches. But the lenses on one sheet were a hundred lenses per inch and the other sheet was only 25% larger. But this appeared like 3.7 lines per inch, which is 27 times larger than one of the sheets and 20 times larger than the second sheet. If it was emulating the smaller lens in a larger format, did it behave the same way as the smaller lens? When I held it so the lenses were running vertically, it removed the vertical window frame from view, and when I turned it so the lenses ran horizontally, it showed the vertical window frame and flagpole outside, but removed the horizontal window frame. It had the same effect on the background as a single lenticular sheet would. This caused me to go back and look at my previous test to the large repeats of 6 or 8 across 28 inches to allow me to figure out what was occurring here and there. The combination of two different types of lenses was causing an interference pattern on each side of the material, and it wasn't the same pattern on each side. It can be thought of as a resonance between the two different types of lenses. These large repeats were simply the same as the 3.7 per inch, but due to the particular lens combination I used, it generated a resonant of 1.5 lenses per foot. I am naming this newly understood effect REMARK, which stands for Resonant Elongated Magnifying Abbreviated Repeating Curves. When we have a slightly different view of version 5, with two very closely related lenses per inch, and version 4 when I turn it around, you can see this larger remark effect. To duplicate this effect by scaling up version 1, the lens would need to be inches thick to accomplish this, and yet to do the same thing this material is as thin as a piece of cardboard. When I use particular combinations of version 2 where both back-to-back -back lenses are identical, the remark effect is about 28 inches across, as can be seen in these next two videos. In the first video, I've moved the edges of the arc to either side, and in the second video, I move the edge of the arc, or neutral zone, to the middle. In other words, this is emulating scaling up 100 lenses per inch version 1 by 2828 times, and that lens, if scaled up, would be 39.6 inches thick and 28 inches wide and weigh about half a ton, or a thousand pounds. To hide an M1 Abrams tank by scaling up version 1, the material would need to be close to an inch thick and would weigh close to 5 tons and require expensive engineering to support that weight. The Remark Effect version would weigh in at about a quarter ton or 500 pounds in its current form, be as thin as cardboard, and as it's just over 1 pound per square foot, would not require expensive engineering to fix it to the tank. Given that an Abrams tank costs about $8.5 million, and this material can make it invisible from ultraviolet through the entire visible spectrum all the way to the shortwave infrared and block the thermal signature, this thin remark version of our material would be a practical addition. Inexpensive aircraft hangars using this material could hide the new $100 million F-35 fighter jet at an airbase, or even the $250 million F-22, or the massively expensive B-2 stealth bomber that costs a whopping $2.2 billion per aircraft. If we were only able to scale up our versions, it would have been impractical to hide larger critical military equipment, such as vehicles, ships, and structures, due to the heavy weight and high costs. However, the remark effect should change that.